Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, all right, how y'all doing? So, what have we done? We've done a lot now. Uh, Germany, I believe, was the first one. Um, the Netherlands, I've done. I've done France. I've done... I'm going to do Finland after this. So I've done Denmark, Netherlands, um, Australia. I believe I've done New Zealand. I'm not positive. Um, I'm missing some. Sweden, Norway. Anyways, let's do another one. Ireland. Let's go. I'm ready. Hope you're ready. Let's do it. Original link to the video, top of the description, right below that link to the Discord, right below that link to my second channel, where I like to learn more about non-history related stuff. Although, a lot of the history related videos that are, you know, backed up in queue in my main channel are starting to spill over onto my second channel because I'll never, never be able to put all of them out. So, this is this channel is now coming to include some history stuff and then just a bunch of other stuff. So, uh, yeah, love for you to join both channels. Hope you're all doing well. If not, you'll be good soon. Don't worry. Emotions are fickle, my friend. Let's learn. Let's go. One, we reached the land of one eighth of my own heritage, Ireland, which means I I'm one uh, w one half, I believe, fifty percent. Awesome. We're brothers. I'm probably a far off distant cousin of our favorite Irishman, Potter. For those who don't know, Potter has helped us out with many of the animations in the past, and Potter has been such a great guy, so we decided really to fly likes Potter that name. out here to literally be in Potter's <laughs> own country's video. Potter, you rock, man. Pot it's pronounced Potter. 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 Guys, I'm so sorry if I butcher these uh, pronunciations. So he says Potter. Literally be in Potter's. Potter. He's saying Potter own country's video potter you rock man potter it's pronounced potter 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 it's time to learn geography now and eh, too late i've been calling you potter for like two years now i'm not changing my mind anyway we've reached ireland and i'm here to correct him if he gets anything wrong so don't worry lads yeah that is so true potter <laughs> yeah, so that's what that feels like God, I love ah, this channel. Oil, Europe's rain shield. The McNugget. Ireland is loaded with so many notable... I always think it looks like a little bird. Like a little chickadee. Little spots and regions. <laughs> and there's a town called Dingle. Okay. First of all, <laughs> Ireland is the third largest island in Europe, located in the North Atlantic Ocean, separated from Great Britain by the North Channel, the Irish Sea, and St. George's Channel. Eh, did you notice how I deliberately avoided British Isles? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it did say, sorry, did it say third largest? Ireland is the third largest island in... So... The English island, is it, is Iceland it? I'm so sorry, guys. Um, area of Iceland. 39,769, area of Ireland. 32, all right, so it's Iceland. Okay, sorry, nope, not feeling that, that's next. Let's go. In Europe, located in the North Atlantic Ocean, separated from Great Britain by the North Channel, the Irish Sea, and St. George's Channel. Eh, did you notice how I deliberately avoided British Isles? Uh, yeah, good call. Now, here's where things get a little confusing. Ireland's subdivisions. Let's just get it over with quick and fast. So, when discussing the independent sovereign state, most people are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which makes up these five six of the island. And unless mentioned otherwise, this is the Ireland we'll be mostly discussing in this episode. To this day, the last fifth northern part of Ireland here is actually part of the UK, and it doesn't even quite know exactly what to label itself. Some call it a province, some say it's a region, some say it's a constituent country, but the point is, the UK holds on to it. Which, as you can imagine, has created some interesting feelings in the past with the Irish. It's yeah. weird though, because the people here can choose their own citizenship, be it British, Irish, or both. On the west side, the North Ireland border just juts into the farmland, ending at a small village called Manger, and provides a seven kilometer wide quarter to the town of Bundoran for the rest of the Republic to enter into Donegal County. And then you have the strange Penny Enclave right across the Finn River, with only a tenth of a kilometer wide entrance that Ireland grabbed and is still part of Monaghan County. This, in return, gave a small exclave to the 
Okay, already some of the weirdest borders okay. I've on seen. Patch of land with only three small farming homes. The only way to get in besides swimming across the river would be by taking the most name-switched international road on the island, the Irish N54, which turns into the A3 highway once you cross into Northern Ireland. Then it switches back into the N54 once you cross into the Exclave. Then it reverts back to the A3 again for about two kilometers, and then back to the N54 once you cross back into the Republic of Ireland. So literally, it's like Irish, British, Irish, British, Irish. Or as I like to call it, my dating life. <laughs> also knee slapper uh there must be a ton of properties then who are like half on the border half well, on. the uk was like eh, instead of following the foil river all the way up to the foil lock why don't we just swerve left through the farmland take the entire city of Derry? because hey logic basically to an irish person the entire island of ireland including northern ireland is just Ireland. So if you consider the administrative divisions, the Republic of I Ireland learned these. is divided into 26 counties. However, many also include the extra six from Northern Ireland and call it 32. But then there's the two city and county councils, Limerick and Waterford, and the three city councils, Dublin, Galway, and Cork, making 31 local authorities in the Republic of Ireland, and technically 37 again if you include Northern Ireland's counties and the capital of Dublin. Sounds about right. Okay, yeah, Woo, I got that right. Woo. Historically, though, Ireland was also kind of split into four provinces that many people still refer to today. They are Connacht, Leinster, Munster. I know the top one. Ulster. And Ulster. Northern Ireland is often referred to as Ulster, as it encompasses most of the counties that make up the historical province. Otherwise, the largest cities after Dublin are Cork and Limerick, with the largest airports being Dublin, Cork, and Shannon airports. Keep in mind, if Northern Ireland was included in this, Belfast would take the number two spots on each of those lists. In addition to being an island itself, right, Ireland... It's Belf I always get Belgrade and Belfast and Bucharest and Budapest mixed up. Where's Belgrade? Syria? So... Belfast. Also hosts hundreds of smaller little islands and islets. The most populated ones being Great Island by Cork, Ackle Island in Mayo, and Grumna and the Iron Islands in Galway. Finally, some places of interest across Ireland might include places like Trinity College, the Guinness Storehouse, the new tomb of Newgrange, which is older than That's the pyramids cool. of Giza, and the Rock of Cashel, Glendalock and Castle, give me. I, I, I know this must be getting old for you guys. Me keep Wicklow. keep re crazy re seemingly overreacting to castles but it is not an overreaction the tomb of newgrange which is older than the pyramids of giza that's and crazy <clears throat> listen i will go to europe one day again when i do the number one goal over anything is to visit a castle like this. I, I don't necessarily care about the time period as long as it is pre, like, like 18th century and before, maybe even 17th century and prior, just so that I can look at everything. Like, you can see the pegs. Were, aren't all the pegs um, used for, like, the, the, uh, that's where, like, when they would build it, that you'd put scaffolding in? Like, you'd put wooden pegs in so you could keep building up and building up. But you could just put me there, like a museum, and just let me be and leave me there for, like, 12 hours. And I will not stop just looking around and imagining how they built it and and all of the different rooms and just being amazed how people, without the tools and machinery we have today, were able to do this. I just... I, it, it, just... It doesn't have to be Ireland. It doesn't have to be uh, England. It, it could be Germany. It could be France. I just, I want to go so bad and just be able to explore. Lock of Cashel, Glendalough and Wicklow, the Blarney Stone of Cork. That island that was filmed at the, the end of Star Wars is called Skellig Michael. Tory Never Island, which kind of has Star like its Wars. own king. Scotia's grave where an Egyptian what? princess is buried, supposedly. I didn't know about that one. You didn't even know that. Wow. I just found it off of Atlas Obscura. The Mound of Hostages. The Cata Fields. The Sky Garden. Hookhead Lighthouse, the oldest continuously used lighthouse still operating in Europe. So you live right next to it. Yeah. Sean's Bar, the oldest surviving pub and possibly the entire world. And of course, way too How many old? churches, abbeys, castles, dolmens, tombs, everything else to List. Way too many of them. Way too many. Of them. Oh, and avoid Temple Bar, right? In Dublin. That's like a tourist yeah. trap, and you can't actually meet any real Irish people there. It's yeah. just don't go there. Don't yeah. go to Temple Bar. Give it a miss. Go to Coppers. 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 Ah, beer. You guys know your way around the pint, don't you? Oh, well, Irish people do, but I don't actually drink. Oh, okay. Huh. After that, mine cold. Oh, yeah. Huh? Huh? Oh, okay. Huh. After that, mine cold. Oh, yeah. Huh? What are these? Ireland is very green. The end. Uh, all right. The west coast of Ireland seems very similar to the the northeast coast of 
uh, the U.S. and uh, southeast coast of of Canada. Very jagged, probably not much sandy beaches, and more so just a bunch of big rock jut outs, jutlands, stuff like that. Right, so there's a little bit more to it than that. Ireland is a post-glacial carved mineral and sandstone island with about 12 small mountain ranges, the majority of which are located in the north, west, and south. You'll notice looking at the map that the east coast of Ireland seems to be relatively smooth and straight, whereas the west coast of Ireland seems to be all choppy and serrated with inlets and peninsulas. Almost like if you took a ball of clay and just... I'm pausing so much, but who owns the Isle of Man? I think someone... Spread it across a flat surface and wonder... I gotta shut up. Ireland seems to be relatively smooth and straight, whereas the west coast of Ireland seems to be all choppy and serrated with inlets and peninsulas. Almost like if you took a ball of clay and just spread it across a flat surface in one direction. <laughs> one direction. Anyway, the tallest peak is Mount Carntool at about a thousand meters. And the longest and most important river being the River Shannon. And a large lake on the entire island being Loch Ney in Northern Ireland. However, if we're talking about the Republic of Ireland, the largest would be Loch Corrib in West Galway. The west side is also home to the most notable natural landmark, the Cliffs of Moher that rise about 120 meters straight up from the ocean. Otherwise, you have the Sleeve League Cliff a bit further up north and into the UK's Northern Ireland. You, still, you have the Giant's Causeway, a series of hexagonal volcanic plug steps that just jut into the ocean side. I love how you say that. Hexagonal. Hexagonal. <laughs> volcanic. Those are natural? In the UK's Northern Ireland, you, still, you have the Giant's Causeway, a series of hexagonal volcanic plug steps that just jut into the ocean side. I love how you say that. Hexagonal. Hexagonal. <laughs> hexagonal. 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 Now, despite being located fairly north in latitude, Ireland actually experiences a strange weather phenomena in which it actually kind of acts like a rain shield for the UK. It takes all the warm air released by the North Atlantic Gulf Stream that starts all the way from the Caribbean. This means that although Ireland is on the same relative latitude as Newfoundland, Canada, they remain about 9 degrees Celsius or about 17 degrees Fahrenheit warmer, rarely reaching the freezing point, which in return means they hardly ever get snow. However, that again in return means Ireland gets a ton of rain like seriously over half the year is drenched you only get like two months of sunshine and then it's back to the downpour i mean wouldn't that i'm not surprised by how far up it is I, I, it seems about right make you guys like kind of depressed what do you think drinking's a thing in Ireland? Speaking of which, the abundance of rain allows Ireland to actually flourish in flora and agriculture, giving it its trademark green colour. Common crops being spuds, sugar beets, and grains like barley, oats, and wheat, which as you can imagine, has a large portion that goes towards Ireland's most famous product, beer. Beer! Mm. Ireland without beer is Guinness. like Mexico without tacos, Koreans without kimchi, Argentinians without salt. Mexico without tequila, Russia without vodka. Also, Bob Saget without his telekinetic laser vision. Yeah, beer culture is such an integral part of being Irish that even priests and nuns get in on the action and share a pint of Guinness. Which, by the way, the Bible never condemns alcohol, just drunkenness. So, know your limits. Yeah, we go to confessional a lot. Otherwise, some top notable Irish dishes might include things like... Box tea. Potato bread. Brown soda bread. Bacon and cabbage. Too many suits to list, like coddle and Irish stew, black pudding, oysters, and Guinness. And overall, Ooh, you can Irish find... Too. too many suits to list, like coddle and Irish stew. Ooh, that looks so good. Black pudding, oysters, and Guinness. And overall, you can find potatoes cooked in various ways with, like, everything. In addition, Ireland is also the perfect habitat for about 26 species of mammals, like the red fox. It rains a lot. It's green. Weather isn't too bad in terms of temperature. They drink a lot of beer. What was that other thing? They love potatoes and, and stew. I, I would do... Fine here. Everything. In addition, Ireland is also the perfect habitat for about 26 species of mammals like the red fox, European hedgehog, the stoat, pygmy shrew, and badger. And the one land reptile that is native to the country, the viviparous lizard. Speaking of which, so nothing can kill you, really. No, the story of St. Patrick driving all the snakes out of Ireland was probably not true. Ireland most likely never had snakes due to its geographic isolation from the rest of Europe. And also St. Patrick probably wasn't Irish, he was Welsh. Yeah, lots of misconceptions when it comes to Irish people. Which brings us to... Hey, so Potter, I... <laughs> Uh, I, did, I was too busy dancing, I didn't even... Demographics. Hey, so Potter... I, Let me guess. Irish... Alright, I'll stop being a smartass. <laughs> Uh, sorry, patter. So what does it mean to be Irish? Patter. Oh, we're all patter. about the crack in Ireland, so we are. Yeah, crack... What? I crack? Guess. Be Irish. Oh, we're all about the crack in Ireland, so we are. Yeah, crack... What? Crack? Crack, crack every day and night of the week. We love the crack, so we do. D.A. Freeze! That's where I can see them! Oh, common misconception. See, we're not actually talking about drugs, we're talking about... Resisting arrest! We're not... Uh, no! First of all... Yeah, uh, that's right, brother. That's what happens when you have crack. Ireland has about 4.8 million people, over 6 million if you include Northern Ireland, and has the highest birth rate in the EU, about 83% of the country. 
country identifies as ethnically Irish, whereas about 9.5% are white of other nationalities, whereas the remainder of the country is other groups like Asians, blacks, and who knows, probably some magical wizards or something. So the country uses the euro as their currency, they also use the type G plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, thanks to modern media, everyone probably has at least a little bit of Question. exposure to the- Wait, the plug? Oh, the plugs. They drive on the left. Um, so does that mean if, if you have to go from Ireland into Nor the Republic of Ireland, I know most people consider it all Ireland, most Irish, if you have to cross the border into Southern Ireland, say you go to work in Southern Ireland, or you go to work in Northern Ireland, or vice versa, does that mean every time you want to buy something, you need to exchange to either pound or, or, or euro, or do they somehow accept both? in uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland. The stereotypical Irish culture one way or another, you know, like river dance or leprechauns or river dancing leprechauns. But there's an entire world to the deep rooted Irish identity. First of all, the language. Technically Ireland, or at least the Republic of Ireland, is a bilingual country that uses both Irish and English, although English is used far more often than Irish ever is. The Irish language is related to other Celtic based languages spoken in Scotland, you mean Wales, example. and to some extent Brittany in France. Just when you thought you were safe after the Iceland episode, Irish comes along and suddenly M and H make a V sound. D I want to try. Make a G or Y sound. B, H, and F sometimes make like a W sound. All right, Paul. Let's say you take a shot at saying these words. I, All right, nice. R I Before he goes, because he'll be better than me. B sound, thought you were the sound. All right, make a G or Y sound. B, only F, written. And H, make a, make like a, uh, I guess. D and H. All right, Paul, let's say G or Y. Irish comes Wales on the song. Suddenly, M and H make, make a B Sorry, I'm sound. cheating. D and D. All right, Paul, let's say you take a shot at saying these words. All right. Our agon, our late. Our agon late. Are I I get Nope, are I glad it means go on. Ta Ta Baktung Ta Baktuk. Ta Tak. Uh, nice try. It's talk duck, it means important. Le Lathers. Le tre letras. Nah, letters, it means toilet. Fail Fail enough. Nacht. Actually, that was just one I made up. But nice try. <laughs> For a long time, the language was suppressed and discouraged by the English-speaking rulers to the point where a couple of generations were greatly affected and grew up barely knowing their own native tongue. Today, the language has seen a huge resurgence and is one of the core subjects in most primary and secondary schools. Although less than half the population claims to be fluent in Irish and only a few communities actually speak it regularly in daily life, the Irish language is still survives into the 21st century. All the public signs are posted in both languages. They even have an Irish-speaking TV channel, radio station, and She's even pretty. the signs are posted in both languages. They even have an Irish focus. I'm a simp. Speaking TV channel, radio station, and even an online newspaper. In order to get a real feel of Ireland, though, you kind of have to know a little bit of history, which will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way we can put it Stone Age. Celtic culture comes in. Chiefdoms. High Kings. Christianity. Vikings. Normans. Castles got built. Black Death. Henry VIII split from the Catholic Church and attacked. Ulster Plantation and quasi English rule Oliver Cromwell. Wars. Theobald Wolf, who led a failed rebellion. Potato Famine. Tons moved to the US and Scotland. Gaelic Revival. Nord doesn't agree. Conflict. Failed rebellion. Potato famine. Tons moved to the US and Scotland. Gaelic revival. North doesn't agree. Conflict and persecution against Catholics. Home rule. Home rule suspended. World War I, Eastern Rising. IRA fights. Irish Civil War. Free Staters won. World War II, they remain mostly neutral. 1969 Civil Rights Marches. Northern Ireland gets more drama. They joined the World War II, Civil they rights. remain mostly neutral. 19... Civil rights for who? Uh, like, what are they? Like, we, we automatically go when we think of civil rights to, like, uh, Martin Luther King and stuff, so I, I'm, uh, I should know it means other things. 69 civil rights marches. Northern Ireland gets more drama. They join the EU. Good Friday Agreement. Celtic Tiger. Financial crisis. But they still grow and move forward. And here we are today. As mentioned, the largest ethnic group of people in Ireland, the Irish, come from a long line of people known as the Celts or the Celtic. It's Celtic, Boston. Celtic. Not Celtic. Thousands of years ago, the Celts roamed all across continental Europe. However, the rise of empires and warring people groups kind of pushed them all the way west into the Isles. And the Celts had an incredibly complex system of tribes or clans and families that dominated certain regions with their- Is my name here? 
Hey, there's an O'Connor. That's my first name. <gasps> my name is sort of here, but I just don't want to say it to give away my last name. Their own chiefs and kings. This is partially why so many people in Ireland have Mick or the, the almost exclusively Irish use O prefix prefixes in Mick right here. Their last names, which translates to son or descendant. Prior to Christianity, Celts were primarily farmers and cattle herders with pagan and druid roots. With some controversial practices recorded by the Romans. Uh, Christianity came in and then Catholicism played a huge role even to this day. However, certain ancient traditions still lived on, like the festival of Save. Sound. So, really? What? I thought M and H make a V sound. Festival of Savins. Sound. So, really? What? I thought M and H make a V sound. Nah, it depends. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Ugh, your language. Sound later became known as Halloween, which became popularized and is celebrated all across the world today. However, originally they used to use turnip lanterns, not pumpkins. Folklore and tradition is strong. We've all heard of leprechauns, but there's also Fionn McCool and the Fianna of the Fenian cycle, Cucullin the Hound, Deirdre and Grania, similar to the Princess Isolde and Tristan in Arthurian legend, and so much more. And the two most popular sports, which are almost never played anywhere else in the world, Gaelic football and hurling. Oh yeah, that's like a... Two most popular sports, which are almost never played anywhere else in the world, Gaelic... So they're holding what looks like a volleyball. They have soccer cleats on, football cleats. They look like have, they have rugby tops and shorts. And then they have... And that looks like lacrosse, just with a wooden, or is it field hockey? Football and hurling. Oh yeah, that's like a Irish uh, Quidditch or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't call it Quidditch. Oh yeah, this is a hurl. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. How do you play with that? Why don't we ask Jason Statham? <laughs> Speaking of which, there is no universal Irish I accent. I wanted to know. So guys, any Irish don't people? Call it Quidditch. Oh yeah, is this is a hurl? Oh wow, that's pretty cool. How do you play with that? Why don't? Isn't is that something that you that you hit a ball with to pass it, or is it something that you use on the ground to hit a ball on the ground? Why don't we ask Jason Statham. Speaking of which, there is no universal Irish accent. You get different uh, dialects from different regions. For example, Moses Tasser thinks he's great. Now he's on YouTube, I'll wrap this hole round his neck, big fat head on him. Well, I we came home on a Monday night, as drunk as drunk could be. I don't know who you are or where you are, and I will find you. I returned this wallet. Dude, thank God you came here because I would have offended the entire country and gotten stabbed within hours of upload if I attempted that. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, some famous people of Irish descent might oh, include yeah. people like Oscar Wilde, James Joyce, Bram Stoker, Samuel Beckett, chemist Robert Boyle, Graham Norton, Terry Wogan, the Irish PewDiePie guy, U2 and Bono, the script, the Dubliners, Phil Linnett, whom I incorrectly refer to as Philly Knot in the Guyana episode. Sorry about oh, that. Worries. The Cranberries, Enya, Hosier, the Rubber Bandits, the dude from One Direction, Colin Farrell, Killian Murphy, Brendan Gleeson. Saoirse Ronan, I Where got do I know him not from? in the Guyana episode. Sorry about no that. Worries. The Cranberries, Enya, Hosier, the Rubber Bandits, the dude from One Direction, Colin Farrell, Killian. Where do I know that guy from? Murphy, Brendan Gleeson, Saoirse and him. Ronan, I got that. Nail it. <laughs> Maureen O'Hara, Richard Harris, uh, Northern Ireland, Liam Neeson, and Michael Fassbender is half Irish, so I guess it kind of counts. Liam Neeson. Yeah, yeah. Some guy called Conor McGregor. Yeah, Conor, Conor McGregor. Uh, Conor McGregor. We have almost the same first and last name. Oh, and according to that one Malaysian guy from Flag Friday, Westlife and Boyzone. Otherwise, we could go on and on about the rich, complex layers of music, dance, literature, symbolism, artifacts, traditions, festivals, clothing, customs, and legends. But that would take way too long. And if you want to know more, just watch any episode of Fair City or Father Ted. Or you could just, like, talk to an Irish person as well. Nah, TV's better. TV never gets anything wrong. Sure. In the meantime, Ireland's True. friend zone in three, two, <clears throat> one. No matter where you find them in this world, you know you're going to be lucky when you find an Irishman. First of all, as an EU member state, Ireland has strong ties to many of their continental neighbours, specifically- Is there anyone who hates Ireland? Like anyone in the world, any country that does- I mean, maybe, maybe Great Britain. Is there- but is like there anyone- I feel like they're like Canada. Like, how can you hate Ireland? 
Only to Catholic They're countries nice. like France and Spain. The French and the Irish have a long history of joining up in the squabbles against the British. And about 60% of students in secondary school learn French. Spain is not only close and does good business, but wow. it's also the number one tourist destination for the Irish, as about a quarter of their entire population visits at least once a year. Surprisingly, the Lithuanians have been flocking to Ireland since the 90s after the collapse of the Soviet Union and make up the third largest immigrant group after the British and the Polish. But keep in mind, the Polish, they like go everywhere, so it's no shocker. I mean, remember how they made up like 8% of Iceland's population? Mm -hmm. Now, despite the past drama, Ireland gets along pretty well with the UK. A lot of their imports come from them, and the Irish are an almost integral part of the common British atmosphere, as so many of them live there. And nonetheless, the best friends of Ireland would actually probably be Scotland in the UK and the USA. Scots and the Irish are Celtic brothers that have shared cultures since the beginning, as well as some of the same strifes and struggles. Tons of Irish moved to Liverpool after the potato famine and were generally welcomed by their cousins. I mean, horrible accents aside, have you seen that one scene in Braveheart where the Irish mercenary generally welcomed? Yeah. You're the madman. <laughs> Looks like I've come to the right place then. Uh, but they said Liverpool. Isn't Liverpool in, Eng in uh, England? Maybe there's two? By their cousins. I mean, horrible accents aside, have you seen that one scene in Braveheart where the Irish mercenaries backstab the British and join their Scottish cousins? Yeah, like that. One scene in Braveheart where the Irish mercenaries backstab the British and join their Scottish cousins. Yeah, like that, right? Yep. Yeah. The USA, though, is like their favorite younger cousin who is a lot bigger and stronger. Not only do about 30% of their exports go to the US, but after the potato famine, hundreds of thousands of Irish came flocking into the Irish. Island. And to this day, about 35 million Americans claim to have either partial or full Irish heritage. The largest concentrations on the East Coast in New England. Irish, English, and French. Some sort of percentage, I'm not sure. Equal parts... Irish and English, which make up the bulk, and then the rest is French. I'm not exactly sure the breakdown. That's about seven times the population of Ireland itself. It even got to me somehow. Thank you, Grandpa, I never met. In conclusion, I'm actually going to give this to you, man. Take it away. Thank you, Paul. In conclusion, Ireland has had to Conor McGregor its way through war, famine, economic recession, terrible leprechaun rapping, and Gerard Butler's horrible accent in P.S. I Love You. Seriously, man, you're Scottish. It shouldn't be that hard. Like but through Gerard all that, Butler. we've managed to be the coolest kid on the block, despite a few emotional issues here and there. We're pretty rad, if I say so myself. Green. Go on, Ireland, you beautiful, drunken mess of a nation, you. And you know what? In honor of your one-eighth Irish lineage, I've decided to bestow on you the title of kind of Irish, I guess. Here's one-eighth of an Irish shamrock hmm. tied on with a piece of sellotape. Wow. Thanks, Potter, even though I always get your name wrong. So, yeah. You do. Oh. Title revoked. No! 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 Okay, come on. We've been through this. Okay, so it's it's like ladder, but pa patter, right? Patter. Patter. Right? Patter. Better. 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 Score. Stay tuned. Israel is coming up next. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> awesome video, you guys. Love it. Ireland, partial homeland of mine, my ancestors. Great video. I'm going to do uh, Finland next, guys. See you next time.